Well, welcome to Beyond Tomorrow, a new series from NZ Herald in partnership with NYOB, where we'll tackle the unprecedented business environment affecting thousands of small and medium-sized enterprises across New Zealand as the world battles to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus. I'm Will Trafford and every day I'll be joined by Ingrid Cronin Knight, NYOB's country manager. And today our guest Richard Abel, a business advisor and chair of the Accountants and Tax Agents Institute of New Zealand. Well, today we're talking about cash flow. As the breaks are put on revenues by these massive lockdowns right across the world, I guess this is essential for us to know about before we have to make these next crucial decisions as small business owners or small and medium business owners, decisions around layoffs, furloughing staff, and I guess if worse comes to worse, pulling the pin. Right, Ingrid? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, Cash flow is king, um, as it always is. And, and, and right now, uh, you know, we've got a lot of small businesses uh, and business owners trying to work out how they survive and navigate their way through these challenging times. And I guess, obviously, some uh, perspective uh, for you, Richard, from, from the accounting perspective. Yes, it's a, a definitely a challenging time for, for our clients um, around New Zealand. Uh, in fact, <laughs> some of our clients are around the world. So uh, we're all in the same boat, uh, as it were. So definitely we've got those challenges to be able to assist our clients to, to make the right decisions at the right time. And that's, that's the difficult thing. I guess what we're talking about now, obviously, is cash flow. For a lot of people, I suppose, who've run a small business, many of them won't even remember back to like the 2008 financial crisis and that kind of thing, right? Which was probably our last sort of big uh, global headwind. In terms of this idea of cash flow, talk me through how we get an idea of cash flow. And I, I've seen some of your notes you've given us, Ingrid, about prog- uh, projections. Yeah, sure. So the most important thing right now, uh, I think, for small business owners to do is to really get a handle on when they're going to get paid, because uh, everyone's, you know, everyone's revenue has shrunk, and so and so there's not as much money in the system, uh, and so calling all of your debtors, everyone that owes you money, and asking them, you know, when when will they actually physically be able to pay you, and getting a handle on that, I think, is really important. And equally, giving a call to all of your, you know, top ten suppliers to to, to work through, you know, potentially trade terms. So what you want to understand is 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 what you owe, um, and when you're going to get paid, and and the net of that, and then what reserves you've got to be able to cover that. Now, if you've got a deficit there and you can't can't see your way through that, then that's when you start needing to talk to, um, you know, finance organisations around how they can uh, help you navigate through some working capital to get you through this this time. Um, but, it, but in terms of uh, a projection, like we always recommend you know, getting into online software because it'll give you an up-to-date view of your cash flow right now and you'll be able to see uh, you know, where your bank balance is at and what you owe uh, and when you project that you'll be able to get you know, your, your money coming in so you can meet your obligations. And I guess some of these ideas, that, that probably brings in the idea of, of solvency, I guess, right? And, and, and when you know if, if your business can essentially continue. The demands change fundamentally, right? So uh, if you're in an industry like tourism or, 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 or travel and you can't make a change to who you're serving, and we've seen some good innovation where, for example, THL are providing camper vans in support of um, you know, people that might need isolation. So you are seeing some people looking to redeploy their assets or, or their products and services to service new markets or, or in current markets. But if you can't see that, then, then then that is one way. But we'd always recommend that you talk to an advisor uh, to help you navigate that and understand any choices before there. And they might be able to highlight some other options you've got, either in terms of you know, managing the supply or managing your demand um, and how you might be able to change things to, to keep on through the, the, this current time. And, yeah, I guess just on that advisor thing, I, I suppose this is super crucial for people, particularly small and medium enterprise businesses that haven't really dealt with this kind of stuff before, what can those advisors do? So they're looking at how much is money is coming in, they're looking out at how much you're sort of putting out, and then looking at other potential options for maybe who you pay first and that kind of thing? Yes, that, that's right. The, the flow of money is really important. And, and when the stream blocks up and um, with one flow, so that's your maybe your, your, your debtors aren't paying you or aren't able to pay you, then you do need to find some other sources of of um, of, of income or, or reven- revenue or cash, and and that's where the 
the wage subsidy has certainly helped um, our small um, medium enterprises. They they needed that to be able to continue to pay to pay their staff, um, and having the ability to be able to go to your bank and and get finance with the um, the government basically backing eighty percent of those loans and the banks twenty percent. That that definitely will will make a difference to a lot of small businesses. Um, I think what businesses need to understand is that they still need to run through the same process of the loan application. Um, so it's not it's not as easy as the the high trust model for the wage subsidy. It is a little bit more um, a little bit more of a process, but it's really important to get your your accountant or business advisor involved in that conversation to make sure that you've got things planned for whatever's going to happen in the future. And I think what this um, situation that we're in has, has proved is that we actually need to plan for a lot of different outcomes. And that's where the business advisor comes in. Where do you get these advisors from? Where do you go to to find them? Yeah, well, uh, Attains, we have um, 400 members around New Zealand. So you can go to the Attains website and um, you'll be able to find um, the, our, our members. Um, there's, there's a number of organizations in New Zealand, um, but definitely attains members is uh, where I'd uh, point you. How brave do you need to be to look at the new options that you've maybe got versus looking at the current money that you've got coming in that might not be coming in? Yeah, the, the reality is, is that most small business owners are courageous and brave and have been to, to get the kind of success they have. And this is, though, a more challenging test in a really intense time period. Uh, and so I think... Every business is going to be different because it, how, many, how much cash reserves and what particular industry they're in will dictate some of the, uh, the sensitivities for them. When things go to alert level three, what can you be doing that's different that, uh, to today that, that's going to help you perhaps service a local market? If you were servicing an overseas one, we know that that trade overseas is going to, and, and freight is going to be uh, more constrained potentially. And so what you need to do is look at, well, what can I provide to my local community? And a good thing for the business community is that New Zealanders uh, are behind um, uh, local businesses more than ever, I think. But uh, at the moment, they're constrained on being able to trade with them uh, at this point in time. So that, that, to me, that's the, the thing to do is to really look at, uh, you know, who are your customers and who have you been serving? And is there an offering you can take to your local market? That bravery and thinking needs to start now because we're, we've got an uncertain time frame for when it's going to change, and um, that's where I think if you can not only just get in touch with the you know, a business advisor or that innovate, or, or or could have a look at your marketing strategy and help you pivot. I think those things are are, are crucial that you get a handle on now. What about the tax burden and stuff? I know the government's obviously some made made some moves around the IRD. We're in unprecedented times, and we usually. Obviously, especially your accounts, people are used to paying things in a certain way, right? Paying the government at this point. Now, what, what's the government kind of doing around, around some of that forgiveness and stuff like that at the IRD? It's huge as far as what Inland Revenue is, is, um, is doing now. They've basically said that if you've got a tax payment after the 14th of uh, February um, this year and you can't make the payment because of COVID-19, that they will uh, potentially wipe off any interest and late payment penalties. So you'll still have to pay the core debt in time, but writing off the interest and penalties is a huge assistance to taxpayers, especially when we're talking about cash flow and how important it is right now. So that, that's a huge, uh, that's a, that's a huge um, provision um, in place for small businesses and taxpayers. Talking about the banks again, I wonder obviously a lot of, um, a lot of businesses are running on credit. How on earth do you go into a bank and talk to them about your situation if you're getting to that point where, you know, you've got payments due and those payments aren't going to go out? There's a reality that everyone's in around what, what their revenue is currently looking like and, and you, what you need to do is make decisions around what your future looks like from now. Uh, and I think uh, banks have never been more supportive because they want to make sure that um, companies stay solvent to meet their obligations and, and help um, people through this time. Having said that, one of the real challenges is around what is the cash projection of the organisation and how does it um, you know, meet its obligations. And it's going to be challenging when you're not quite clear what's going to happen in demand. We certainly know if you're in, if you're in uh, services like health and, uh, and and food and that value chain, you know you, you're, you're trading pretty pretty well. And then education with the projections of unemployment, most people look to then re reach, so that will have a future in other industries where they're in rapid decline. 
then that will be very challenging. Uh, and so you will need to be courageous. Now, if you're, the other thing I'd say is, you know, companies are always financed either by debt, um, you know, reserves or equity. And so the, the balance between that, um, you know, is, is going to uh, uh, change in this period of time as well. Uh, but I, yeah. I would encourage you to get the kind of, finance that you need to navigate these sort of working capital issues. Yes, and this is where your your professional tax and business advisor comes in because when you go through this limiting <laughs> application process, you're going to need a business plan, you're going to need cash flow forecasts in order for the bank to consider giving you finance. And the benefit of using um, online products like MYB is that they've got the, the ability to do cash flow forecasts and you can do real-time um, comparisons with your profit and loss monthly so that you can keep the bank updated. Um, but definitely that application process is is a really important one to get good advice on 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 um, on that. If, if you come into your business and you've got a certain amount of cash in your bank account and you've got bills due and you've obviously not gone on to your advisor yet, do, do you kind of freeze paying those bills and go to an advisor immediately? Or do you pay what's due in, in the coming days or whatever and, and, and then go to an advisor? Like, how essential is it to kind of freeze your business as it is and get that support in? Yeah, yeah it's a good question, Will, because uh, people often clam up and tighten up when things are tough, don't they? So they'd, they'd rather not spend money on something, even though they actually owe that money to suppliers, for example. Um, because they think they might need that um, that money in the future for something more important. But I think the key is to keep the money flowing. You've, you've got to spend money. Your business spends money. You've still got to invest in your staff. You've still got to um, buy products. They, in turn, your, your, um, your suppliers, they, in turn, doing the same thing. It's important to keep that money flowing into the economy so that the economy keeps going. As soon as we all tighten up, that's when we start getting into that um, – that, that doom and gloom picture. So I think it's really important, yes, to, to balance who you're going to pay and when, but still to keep the businesses going um, as much as you can. Absolutely. How do you decide to put your own capital in or not? If you're looking at, you know, if you're looking at your business, I suppose that it's all about personal circumstances as well, right? <clears throat> With mortgage holidays, you, you might find some people are looking to finance a lot more against their house uh, and take greater risk on that. And and uh, and look, I think that there's always you know further risk with doing that in terms of it making you more vulnerable. Uh, uh, if you can't get the uh, you know, through the headwinds, uh, yeah. You know, and I think in the end you've got to get really practical. And right now, what this is causing is I think in the first week when we went to a level four, everyone was like, "How do I work from home?" And, and you know, last week people started to. Now, now think about what they could do about it and get get in touch with um, you know, all their uh, suppliers and customers and, and, and work out what they could do. Um, and I think in this next couple of weeks, you, what you'll see is that that innovative thinking starting to come to the fore where you can actually go, right, okay, so now I've got a clear view about where my cash is at. I, I know I've got this option where I can get more finance, but now what other options have I got? Uh, and, you know, like I just encourage you that if you're in that situation where you're thinking about do I put more in, any investor, you want to see that you've got a really successful projection out the other end of it. Maybe you have a solid business, but you have some pretty significant cash flow issues or something like that. Is now when you maybe start looking at partnering up with some of your competitors and that kind of stuff as well. Maybe going to someone that might have um, some some better lined pockets, but not as not as solid business, as opposed to just kind of going, I as an, as a business myself and not in a cash position to keep going. Do you go and talk to to some of your competitors and that kind of thing as well and look at maybe your business looks very different after this. Yes, that's, a, that's actually a good point. There's, there are a lot of opportunities that come from situations like this um, and, and certainly you've got to try and think about all those options and going to suppliers, uh, so to, to competitors is, is one of those options, but also thinking about how you can work differently. So think about a lot of our SMEs, they, um, they're small, so they can move quickly, they can change direction quickly. We've got the benefit of having the majority of businesses in New Zealand being in that, that SME market, and they can make decisions really quickly and change quickly and adapt to whatever situation they're facing. But the thing is, they have to work out how to do it and when to do it. And, and that's where the, the financial advisor, the, the business advisor comes in to say, look, this is what I think you need to consider. And, and often it's just like a sounding, uh, sounding wall um, 
basically just talking to someone about, hey, these are my ideas for my business. What do you think? Um, would it be a goer? And, and getting some expert advice on that would, was certainly going to, going to help. One other question that um, you know, someone asked me the other day is, should, should, you, should you go to crowdfunding sources uh, as, a, as a source of equity? And I thought that what was interesting about that is I probably wouldn't go for a source of equity at this point in time because uh, you've got you know, unset, uncertain um, you know, cash flow forecasts in the future. But if you can actually launch a model, uh, a model or a product or a service and, uh, and, and then through the crowdfunding, you're getting um, you know, funding for that. And that shows that there actually is a market and people are buying it. And so it's a really easy way to validate some of those ideas and market innovations, I think. And the other thing to consider is that interest rates are, are really low. So why not use the banks in order to be able to facilitate the, the con, um, continuation of your business before you have to go and, and share some of your profits or some of, the, um, some of your, your shareholding of, of your business. Uh, so definitely using those, those, um, those banks as, as financiers is a, is a really good opportunity. And it won't be that, that costly when you consider um, what the interest is going to cost you over the over a couple of year period. So definitely, I'd, I'd look at some other other ways of getting um, money or cash flow into your business before you looked at um, some other opportunities. To be in a position like these businesses are in now, where you're being told by a government you cannot trade, you you can't innovate to do something to pivot your business to bring in revenue in some other way. It must be the most terrifying experience for for other like business owners. What we know from our, our research is, so mental well-being is, is, uh, is that one in five people will have a mental well-being concern in any given year in, in New Zealand, but uh, for our small business owners, they've, one, it's one in three that have that, uh, you know, from uh, the moment that they've either taken over their business or start, started their business. And, uh, and usually it's, you know, depression or anxiety that comes with, um, you know, the, the, the pressures of having to, to, to serve all your clients meet the demands, make sure your employees are happy. They generally skip meals, get bad sleep, poor sleep, and then, uh, you know, ultimately, um, you know, there's a bit of a spiral and they'll be feeling more pressure than ever. And that's why I think, um, you know, having a, a, an advisor is just someone, that, a trusted person that's actually got your interest at heart. It's really uh, useful and I can't recommend it, you know, more, is that, is that a, you know, someone that's actually in your court uh, when you've got, um, yeah, many employees that want to be you know, want to be paid, and they're all concerned about. There, I think that the the pressure on the small business owner is is, is large, and they'll be feeling the heat uh, yeah, intensely at the moment. So, I guess the takeaways that I've got are, are, are you, you want to move pretty quickly and get sound advice, and 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 be pretty calm. Is that sort of is that for these people that are you know going back to work, even albeit from home on Monday, looking at what no doubt will be a pretty delicate cash position any other advice from from either of you look i think it's uh all about the future now and so uh whatever you did have you've got to make decisions uh based on what the future looks like so you know whatever uh cash reserves you've got uh whatever you can negotiate with your customers and suppliers around payment uh and then making decisions off that to me it would be my number one thing is get a good handle on on your future cash coming in and what your obligations and, and any negotiation you can make around that. And then that'll give you a, an informed position to be able to then make a, a, a decisions about what you might want to do. Yes, and communication is the key. Communication with your staff, with your suppliers, with your customers, making sure that everyone is aware of, of how, you, how you're going, where you're going, um, what challenges you're facing, and then everyone can come together to work out the, the best solution for, for all of you. Well, that's it for our first episode of Beyond Tomorrow. We want to hear your questions along the way with this series. Tomorrow, we're talking about legal advisory around lease agreements, rent forgiveness, eviction from commercial premises, that kind of thing. Email your questions to video at nzherald.co.nz. I'm all traffic. Bye for now.